May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God, and we would like to share our reflections on these Bible readings. We hope that it is useful for preparing our hearts to receive the Eucharist. Saturday of the 34th week in Ordinary Time A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. I, Daniel, found my spirit anguished within its covering of flesh, and I was terrified by the visions of my mind. I approached one of those present and asked him what all of this meant in truth. In answer, he made known to me the meaning of the things. These four great beasts stand for four kingdoms which shall arise on the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingship to possess it forever and ever. But I wished to make certain about the fourth beast, so very terrible and different from the others, devouring and crushing with its iron teeth and bronze claws, and trampling with its feet what was left. About the ten horns on its head, and the other one that sprang up, before which three horns fell. About the horn with the eyes and the mouth that spoke arrogantly, which appeared greater than its fellows. For as I watched, that horn made war against the Holy Ones and was victorious until the Ancient One arrived. Judgment was pronounced in favor of the Holy Ones of the Most High, and the time came when the Holy Ones possessed the kingdom. He answered me thus, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, different from all the others. It shall devour the whole earth, beat it down, and crush it. The ten horns shall be ten kings, rising out of that kingdom. Another shall rise up after them, different from those before him, who shall lay low three kings. He shall speak against the Most High, and oppress the Holy Ones of the Most High, thinking to change the feast days and the law. They shall be handed over to him for a year, two years, and a half year. But when the court is convened, and his power is taken away by final and absolute destruction, then the kingship and dominion and majesty of all the kingdoms under the heavens shall be given to the holy people of the Most High, whose kingdom shall be everlasting. All dominions shall serve and obey him. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You sons of men, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. O Israel, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Priests of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Servants of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Spirits and souls of the just bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Holy men of humble heart bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. In Daniel chapter 7 verses 15 to 27, Daniel is troubled by the visions he has seen and seeks an explanation from one of the attending angels. The angel reveals that the four beasts represent four kings, but the true power and kingship belong to the holy ones of the Most High, God's people, who will possess an everlasting kingdom. Daniel inquires about the fourth beast which symbolizes the kingdom of Macedonia and its ruler, Alexander the Great. He also asks about the ten horns on the beast's head, 
representing the ten kingdoms that emerged after Alexander's death, and the extra horn that represents King Antiochus IV, who persecuted the Jewish people. The angel explains that Antiochus will oppress the Holy Ones for a limited time, but ultimately his dominion will be taken away and the Holy Ones will receive everlasting kingship. The passage concludes with a message of hope, as the people of God will be given dominion and all nations will serve and obey them. The passage foreshadows the coming of Jesus, who establishes an eternal kingdom and emphasizes the importance of living as faithful followers of Christ. Luke chapter 21 verses 34 to 36 mentioning that something may hold you back from the joy and freedom of the Lord. God wants our hearts for him and for his kingdom of peace, joy, and righteousness, Romans chapter 14 verse 17. But our hearts can be weighed down by many different things. Jesus, our Lord and Master, offers us true freedom, freedom from the power of sin and wasted life and freedom from our unruly desires and disordered passions such as making food, drink, or anything else our master rather than our servant. Jesus wants our hearts to be ruled by one thing only his love and truth, which enables us to choose whatever is good and to reject whatever is evil and harmful for us. Jesus also warns us of the temptation to slacken off to become spiritually idle, lazy, indifferent, or inattentive to God's presence and His Word and guidance for our lives. We can fall asleep spiritually if we allow other things to distract us from the reality of God and His Kingdom. It is very easy to get caught up in the things of the present moment or to be weighed down with anxious cares and concerns. The Lord wants us to be ready at all times to meet Him whether it be in our rising, eating, working, or taking our rest. He comes to draw us to Himself and he wants you to alert and attentive to his voice. The Lord Jesus knows our struggles, weaknesses, and shortcomings. And he assures us that we do not need to carry our burdens alone nor struggle without his help. He is always very present and ready to give us whatever strength, guidance, and help we need to fight temptation and to stay the course which he has set for us. But there is one thing he doesn't tolerate, indifference, an attitude of not caring and doing nothing. The Lord wants us to cast our anxieties on Him and to ask for His guidance and help. We need to pray for God's strength and wisdom. Until the Lord comes again, we can expect troubles, trials, and temptations. Our adversary the devil does not rest in his attempt to lure us away from God's will for our lives. If he cannot succeed in getting us to renounce our faith in Christ, he will try little by little, to distract us from pursuing God, especially in prayer and listening to His Word. Ask the Lord Jesus to rekindle the fire of His love in you so that you will be ready and eager to meet Him when He comes again. An early church father, Origen of Alexandria, explained the reason our Lord Jesus said, Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life and that day catch you by surprise. Origen said, But take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a snare. You heard the proclamation of the Eternal King. You learned the deplorable end of drunkenness or intoxication. Imagine a skilled and wise physician who would say, Beware, no one should drink too much from this or that herb. If he does, he will suddenly be destroyed. I do not doubt that everyone would keep the prescriptions of the physician's warning concerning his own health. Now the Lord, who is both the physician of souls and bodies, orders them to avoid, as a deadly drink, the herb of drunkenness and the vice of intoxication and also the care of worldly matters. I do not know if anyone can say that he is not wounded because these things consume him. Drunkenness is therefore destructive in all things. It is the only thing that weakens the soul together with the body. According to the Apostle, it can happen that when the body is weak, then the spirit is much stronger. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 And when the exterior person is destroyed, the interior person is renewed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16
In the illness of drunkenness, the body and the soul are destroyed at the same time. The spirit is corrupted equally with the flesh. All the members are weakened, the feet and the hands. The tongue is loosened. Darkness covers the eyes. Forgetfulness covers the mind so that one does not know himself nor does he perceive he is a person. Drunkenness of the body has that shamefulness. Lord Jesus, rouse my spirit to the truth that this world is passing away. Give me a lively faith, a joyful hope, and a fervent love to see you face to face when you return in glory. Amen.